and what's up guys so we got a fun little project in the garage my buddy Jeff brought over his 911 how beautiful this car is this is what he calls Penny Joe so we're gonna be wiring up these lights and then we're gonna be finishing up some interior bits and look what we got over here we got some really cool skid plates so this will be some uh, some fun stuff and uh, right now I'm just finishing up routing some of these lines and we're gonna do some wiring right now make sure that this wiring harness is all nice and secure porsche makes it really uh easy to wire things in these cars because you get your battery right here and all of your fuse block look at these old school fuses i remember those from my old volkswagen beetle days i'll show you where i'm going to put the switch now on porsches all the lights are over here on this left driver's side area. You have your headlight switch, your emergency light switch, and I'm gonna mount this switch right underneath the dash pod there with this little red illuminated switch to kind of match everything. And we have a light and some lights. Today's project is getting these skid plates uh, on the Porsche. This is the front one. I've already started to disassemble some of the pieces. Uh, this little cooler had a little guard there that actually needs to come off in order for that skid plate to fit. And I'm marking these little weld on plates for the front mount now. And you can see those are gonna go right there of course got to be careful because that right there is the fuel tank <laughs> so we're gonna be super careful not to uh, catch stuff on fire so before I weld these brackets on they're just a little bit too long to fit in that area. I'd like to get a weld on this side as well as these. So I'm just gonna do a little trimming right there. Whoops. Uh, here we are and <laughs> here's the mess. Uh, we finally got the four mounts welded onto the body for the skid plate. I just finished drilling some holes in that uh, upper portion for that little cooler. Anyway, let's uh, put this guy on. Okay, so there it is. The front uh, skid plate is on. As you can see, I have two mounting bolts here and then two in the rear there. All of these mounts had to be welded on to the body, which is nerve wracking to do because you have to grind off all of this uh, like insulation slash seam sealer in order to get the bare metal. And of course, then you have to weld. And the other issue is, is, you know, body is thin and these mounts are thick. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy to burn through the body. You know, obviously the only way to do this is to focus on the thick part of the metal first and jog over to the thin stuff uh, briefly enough to, you know, make sure the weld gets on there and, and holds really tight, but you're obviously focusing on the thick. If you focus on the thin, you're going to burn right through it. The other thing is, you know, it's sketchy to weld on um, bodies and stuff because there's another side. And in this case, thankfully, the interior is not there. There's no carpet. Had it been in place, I can guarantee you the carpet probably would have caught fire. So I made a point of, you know, keeping a fire extinguisher handy and a water bottle. And uh, I, uh, I checked that interior often and even gave it a little spray just to make sure, like, stuff wasn't getting heated up. But um, I can see why, you know, some people manage to catch cars on fire when they're welding um it, it it can be easily done so you know you always got to stay safe here's those holes i drilled for the cooler i'm hoping that's going to be enough i guess we'll find out and uh we're good to go now we're going to try to do the rear
Okay, so we're back at it today, and we are trying to plan out how to affix this rear skid plate. And we have these little brackets, big brackets I should say, that are supposed to just fit right up against this channel. And then they bolt to the uh, bottom of the skid plate. Okay, so we have that bracket in place. And what I've done is uh, use some rivets to hold that plate in place makes it so much easier when you're using uh, the welder we're going to go and try and tackle the other side first before i break out the welder this one took a little bit of modification now i knew this was going to be a little tricky you have these um oil lines that run over here in this oil tank which the oil filter is connected to so putting this bracket in this area is kind of super hard to do. So I had to do a little modification. Um, I had to cut this bracket and cut these two other little stanchions that go up. Now what I'm going to do, my plan is, is to add a piece of uh, metal here, weld these up nice and stout, and then come back and do the support up towards the rear of the Porsche. All right, another messy, busy day, eight hours today. Just finished up uh, making some brackets and finishing up some welds so we can get this skid plate mounted. And then hopefully tomorrow, we'll be able to just throw it all together. And now I get to clean all this up. This rear skid plate is in. A few more hours yesterday and a couple more hours today. It is in and we are good. It is nice and stout. Let's rewind a little bit, show you what I've been doing. Basically, it's interior stuff. So I received these bins full of parts and a brand new carpet kit which is like the world's worst puzzle because there's no instructions. There's like 28 pieces. And for the last two hours, I have been trying to make sense of what shape goes where in this car. I have it all figured out and I know it doesn't look like it, but it's strategically placed right now. Left, right side, back, tunnel. I removed the seats and I'm taking apart some of these floorboards now. It's little pieces of uh, some trim that still remain here that I need to take away before we start gluing some things down. You know, and there's an order to this, believe it or not. Some of these pieces have these little edges that are sewn to them. And those typically are last because they're overlapping the stuff that gets glued down at the bottom. Uh, Jeff is also waiting on some new door cards. You notice there's stereo speakers, but hey, there's no stereo. Those are in route. I think Jeff's going to put some new seats in too. I don't know what brand he's going to go with. Here's the rear deck. We are not going to use that anymore because this carpet kit is what they call the RS uh, carpet. It's kind of plain Jane, deletes the back seats. So it's just gonna be kind of uh, fitted back there. Right, another day in paradise. Doing a little more prepping before we start to glue down some of this mat. Had to remove the old insula uh, insulation and some glue on these quarter panels in the back. Smoothing everything out, gonna do a vacuum and a brushing just to make sure all the little debris is cleaned up. Now we have these interior kick panels. I have to reuse these because they cover some of the little uh, mechanisms under the dash. So I'm pulling off the old material and what I'll do is save this old carpet, put it on this new piece, trace it out, cut it, and then glue it. And yeah, I'm using my Lexus as a little workbench. Don't worry, don't worry, no scratches. 
Uh, I'm gonna transfer over here. I need to clean some of that stuff off. Sprayed one of these kick panels, letting the glue dry for a little bit. That is the key to using this spray adhesive. Don't lose your patience and start to try to manipulate that while it's still wet, because you're gonna have a mess. And it's gonna get all over your hands, and then you're gonna touch the surface on the backside, and it's gonna be ugly. So you gotta let it sit for, I don't know, six, seven, eight minutes, depending on the temperature. Let it get tacky, and then it is much easier to manipulate. So you can see here, I have this panel. I'm just waiting for this glue to dry on the edge and I'm gonna fold those over. And that's how one panel turned out. Chugging along here, getting this kit in piece by piece. Can you even see that because of the sun? Yeah, it's getting there. I just had to open the garage door because this glue that I'm using is making me loopy. <laughs> Need some ventilation. Well, folks, we are at 10 hours today on Friday. A carpet kit is in. And... Uh, yeah, it's done. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I've been uh, sniffing a lot of glue all day. That's what I could probably say. So I just finished installing some RS uh, door panels. Really clean things up a bit. Uh, nice little door pulls. Releases it. They're just kind of nice, basic, really tie into the... Uh, black and gray, and I think it was time that these old guys just kind of went away. And we're back at another day with the Porsche. Got the seats in today, and the interior is done. Everything turned out really, really slick, like that. Today is exciting because I get to play with my new toy. Wow. Yep, that is the Pro Tools Hydraulic Pipe bender. I'm sorry, tube bender. There is a difference between a tube and a pipe. Did you guys know that? So for years, I had my trusty Harbor Freight pipe bender. I was finally able to buy a tube bender and get some dies, and I had to make this stand. So I'm super stoked for today because I get to use it. So what I'm doing is building a little bash bar. I've marked out the center point, and then I've marked out these points here, which kind of match that hood line, that I want to start going in just about 15 degrees. Those marks coincide with the marks on the pipe. I've laid those out. I'll check in with you guys in just a little bit after I drink my protein shake. You know, for the first time around, wasn't too bad. I didn't flub anything up too much. So we got the tube on and I made some brackets that tie in underneath to the frame. I think I'm gonna build a little crossbar just to go uh, a little loop around the top. And then of course the skid plate is gonna go right in the middle there. Okay, so we just bent up the uh, top hoop and I'm just doing some notching. And there is a nice notch. Let's see how this bad boy mates up. Oh yeah, looking slick. Hey, we're bending more steel, more tube. This time we're doing square. Got this all set up. I'm learning some things. I'm learning gauges and angles and degrees and all that stuff. I did uh, bend this front piece. And what this is, is the rack. It's gonna go right up on top of that little porcha. OK, 
Okay, so some more progress on the rack. Uh, I got all the bends and it, hey, it turned out pretty decent, 90 degrees all the way around. So what I'm doing here, as you can see, I have a little 90 degree angle iron in there. Uh, I've prepped this little seam and I have downward pressure down and then to the side. So this is perfectly level and straight when I throw a little weld on there. And then I'm gonna weld in some cross beams, a few of them, and then figure out how I'm going to mount it on here. All right, more updates besides a uh, messy, messy shop. I decided instead of using the one inch slats all the way across, that might be a little overkill. I kind of feel like that's super heavy. And this isn't like a rock crawling overlanding vehicle that needs to support a rooftop tent. So I decided on using this half inch square tube that I had. And the benefit to that is also now the unit is upside down. So I'm going to weld the slats on that top side, if you will, which actually will give this a little bit more room in the center because El Porsche is obviously domed. So that's the plan, Stan. And uh, I just have to clean up the metal now and whip up the old Miller, fire it up and do some welding. Alrighty, it's approaching 10 p.m. and uh, we have the rack. I was just playing around, like what if I made this cool little sheet and then of course do some go fast holes and I have these really cool beveled punches that you clamp together and it gives it a nice finished beveled uh, look. I don't know. And I would just attach those to that. Might give it a cleaner look. That way it kind of follows this gutter line, follows that line. Okay, so I found this lovely piece of aluminum in my stash. And uh, I'm just gonna trace this out now and cut it out, make a couple of them, and then punch some holes. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make these really cool go fast holes. Basically, I'm just using these dimple dies. I marked my holes here and I'm gonna drill a small little pilot hole. And then the next step is to use a hole saw. This is a two inch hole saw. And then once that is done, I insert this guy, which is a dimple, uh, dimple die. <laughs> I was going to say something else. It's a dimple die and uh, just impact it. Da, 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 da. And it leaves this nice, really cool go fast hole. Ta-da! And then this little handy doohickey is a, uh, a burr removing tool. My buddy Ryan told me about this some time ago. Uh, totally cool. So you just take this. And it removes all those little burrs on the side when you drill. Same thing on this side. Cleans up the hole, cleans up your drill a little bit. All right, now it's a little hard to do this with holding the camera, but essentially I'm just uh, inserting this die, tightening it up, making sure that it's center in the hole, which I believe it is. So you can see there's a little bit of a, a gap there. Take your impact and then watch this magic. Voila!
Ta-da! Look how cool that is. I don't know why I get such a kick out of that, but it looks just so neat. And as the A-Team says, I love it when a plan comes together. Oh, you know, it's those little touches that really just kind of change the average project to something just a little cooler. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit better. So we're at the stage of painting. Uh, it was warm enough today in good old Utah, 53 degrees. I just got done spraying these with a third coat, nice and glossy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The Porsche is done, Penny Joe is done. It's gonna snow tonight, so before it snows, thought I'd take some photos and show you. Are you ready? Okay, there you go. And you know, it's all about the details, so it's those little things. Like, he was missing some center caps, so I made him one. If you know, you know. Jeff is on his way over right now. He said he uh, couldn't sleep last night. He was kind of up like a little kid, dreaming about his car, so I hope he likes it. I guess we'll see. It's pretty safe to say that Jeff likes the 911. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me on yet another episode, Utah Johnny. Appreciate it, guys. Make sure you give it a like and a subscribe. Hey, Jeff and his wife, Callie, are big car people. They have a bunch of really cool cars. Make sure you check them out at The Driveologist and Charlie underscore Ventures. They're cool people, folks. We'll catch you next time.